Hello everybody, and this video is a continuation of the games I've played this weekend. Uh, this was the second round of the Four Nations Chess League uh, over this weekend. It was round 10 uh, overall, because this uh, tournament is played uh, throughout the year uh, on several weekends, usually one game a day. And unfortunately, my team's first team was playing our second team. Uh, it was a bit, a bit ridiculous. Uh, so I was expected to win this. And, uh, well, we'll see if I, can, if I did in the end. I was black against Devin Korea, who is about 130 ECF, uh, but is rapidly improving. And again, the time control is 100 minutes for the first 40 moves, with a 50 minute add-on and also a 30 seconds increment. So Devin played d4, I played knight f6, and here he played knight f3, which is uh, the move that avoids a lot of mainline theory. So, for example, e5, the Budapest, which I used to play quite a lot, uh, is not available to me because knight takes e5. But there is one small plus for me, uh, because white hasn't played c4. I play c5, and now white has a few options. Uh, he played bishop f4, but if he played d5... I play b5, and now I've not sacrificed the b5 pawn like a Benko Gambit. The position is actually uh, more of a Benoni, just with black guessing in a very early b5. Now, it leads to interesting positions, which are not uh, main line. So, in the game, bishop f4 is played, and this gives me an opportunity for a cheapo. I play c takes d4. So what would you play next? All right, well, if you played queen takes, I can get in knight c6 with a tempo. So this is very good for black. Uh, I think practically equal already. And if you do take with the knight, then, oh dear, disaster. e5, forking knight and bishop. And after bishop takes, the only way to save the piece, I have queen a5 check, which uh, is a double attack. It, fought, it forks the uh, king and the bishop with check. So after knight c3, queen takes bishop, and I'm up a piece for a pawn. White doesn't have enough compensation for the lost material. There's not enough activity for White to really attack me. So this is completely winning. He didn't take, though. He spotted it. Instead, he played c4, uh, gaining some space. And here I blundered. Well, I say blunder. I made an inaccuracy. I think the best move is to play d6 and then... Uh, white can't take the d4 pawn, as I have e5. So the move I think uh, Devin would have to play would be e3. Then I would take um, bishop takes. Now I'm simply a pawn up. White doesn't have a lot of pressure, so I can continue development with either knight c6 and bishop g4, or I can spend the next two moves playing g6 and bishop g7. Uh, then castling. So this is pretty good for me. But in the game, I played d takes because I thought I'll grab the pawn and be a pawn up. White now took. And after knight c6, e4, we've reached a Smith Mora gambit, which is usually uh, reached by the Sicilian if black plays. Uh, in e4, c5, white sacrifices with d4 and then c3. 
So we've reached an opening where white has a lot of compensation for the lost pawn. Queen a5, just because I wanted to mix it up a little. Queen d2. And now d6. So I want to play with a very small centre and develop my pieces quickly, catch up in the development, castle, and only then start uh, trying to maybe swap off pieces or use my extra pawn. So bishop b5, bishop d7, castles. And here I saw I did have the option of winning another pawn with knight takes e4. It's very interesting. After knight takes uh, e4, queen takes bishop, but here I was a bit scared of rook f e1 with the threat of knight takes d6 check winning the queen. So I thought after I'd castled, rook e to c1 uh, could give me some real uh, a real headache. I might have to play king b8, and now white has not quite enough compensation for the two pawns, but the evaluation is not incredibly uh, winning for black. It's, it's black's better, but that's to play very, very accurately. And I wasn't really feeling up to playing an incredibly long game. I wanted to win fast. So I played g6 to uh, allow me to castle. Rook fd1. And again, knight takes e4 is an option, but there are still... Uh, plenty of uh, plenty of attacks for white. So, for example, here we might reach a position like this, and oh, it's still it's two bishops for a rook, but the black king is very exposed and also can't castle. So, I, I this position is not something I, I want to be playing, especially against someone rated. Uh, a lot a lot uh, lower than my own racing. That scares me a bit because they have nothing to lose and they're attacking me with everything. So I want to have a very controlled game where I can use my technique and experience to grind out a win or at least play without risk. So I play bishop g7, rook a c1, and I castle. And now he felt that his bishop on b5 wasn't really doing much, so bishop c4. And after my move bishop g4, I felt like this was a regular uh, position. This looks very common, and I'm a pawn up as black. So this this, this felt good. I, I, I felt like I had more of a grip on the game. Queen e3. Uh, and here I felt that maybe I should play knight d7. Uh, just to extend my bishop on g7's influence. But I don't do that. I play more of a trading move. Bishop takes f3, queen takes, knight e5. So the idea is just to uh, remove a pair of minor pieces each and get down to an end game where I will be a pawn up. Bishop takes, queen takes... And now knight d5 causes a lot of problems. That knight's very powerful on d5. So I played rook a c1. I can't take on e4 because uh, rook e1 would pin the knight and, and, and win. So rook a c8 is, is my move. b3 guarding the bishop and also uh, stopping me playing queen takes b2 at a later point. Uh, and here I saw a potential move to simply trade a few more things. I played b5, bishop takes, and here the computer says I should play rook takes c1. Rook takes, knight takes. And I have enough here to uh, to be fairly comfortable. I've got two center pawns and a passed d pawn. So... I should take, but instead I take the pawn first, bishop c4, and then I play a anti-positional move. Uh, I think I probably should uh, play 
Maybe just something like king h8 to stop any knight takes e7 check moves. Uh, which does look very dull and boring, but, but it has something to it. Bishop f6 might be an idea to guard e7, but instead I play bishop h6, taking it off the long diagonal. And rook c2. Then I played knight d2. So what I want to do is, again, trade. I'm trying to fork the queen and bishop and simply uh, take it. So then also there's, there's opposite colored bishops on the board at the moment, and I want at least one of our bishops to come off. And here he played queen c3, uh, which leads to a lot of troublesome tactics, but there's an even stronger move. Queen d3 which is now going after my knight on d2. And uh, my one of my teammates thought this was completely winning, and he's not completely wrong, because knight takes c4 is almost forced, uh, but my teammate made a slight error in that he thought rook e2 was the move. Uh, knight takes e7 is going to come. But I can just about make it by playing knight to b2, uh, forking the queen and the rook. So if white takes the queen, I will take the queen. Uh, and then knight takes e7 is a bit slow because my knight would be attacking the rook on e5. So every, all of white's pieces are starting to hang. But the more interesting move is queen a6, which now is... Uh, protecting the rook on e2, and the rook is attacking the queen of knight, and knight takes e7 is a threat. So I deal with that by playing knight take the uh, queen takes knight, rook takes, and I have a back rank check. Rook e1 takes, and white has to give up the queen. So I'll be two pieces up. However, Rook e2 is not the best move. Instead, taking the knight, the more simple option, king h8, rook e2 now, and after queen takes g, queen to g5, uh, white could take with the rook on e7, or take with the knight, and it, I think white is actually a little bit better in uh, this game. So, that was a possibility, but instead... My opponent, my opponent plays queen c3, attacking the queen, and I couldn't really see any good moves for me. Uh, I can't play knight takes bishop because queen takes queen, and whatever I recapture with knight takes e7 check, uh, forking king and rook and winning the exchange. So I play queen takes queen, and here my opponent missed a Zvishenzerg. What he should do is first take the pawn with check, and after my king moves, then take the queen. And here, maybe rook c5 is the best option I have. The computer still says this is a tiny bit better for black, but I am dubious. I think, I think it's about level. Maybe even white has an advantage because of uh, my d6 pawn being quite weak. Uh, anyway, he didn't take the pawn with check. He instead took with the rook, which allowed rook f e8. And uh, here, yeah, I'm quite embarrassed to say, I didn't see any tactics from this point onwards. Uh, what I played and whether it worked out or not is entirely by chance. I was quite tired and I wanted to finish the game, so I was blitzing, uh, not really thinking much, which is dangerous against any opponent. Uh, he was looking at knight takes e7 check, rook takes, and now bishop takes f7 check, king takes, and rook takes rook. So here, it, white is actually a pawn up and has a rook against bishop and knight. So materially it's even, but when there's three pieces against two like this with the, my rook on the board... I think that my pieces are better coordinated, and therefore I have a small advantage. Not much of one, but I could 
play on forever here and uh, and win. Not something I wanted to do though, but uh, I might have been forced to. Uh, so that was definitely an option. Instead, he played f4 to disrupt the communication between my bishop and knight, which allowed me to trade. And then I played king f8. I, I didn't want any more forks, so I moved the king. And now rook h3. And I thought king g7, and I saw he had g4, and I didn't want to have to think about any tactics. So I played bishop g7, putting it on uh, the long diagonal again. And at this point, we've reached move 25. I have 85 minutes left on my clock, and he has 68 minutes left. So both of us weren't really uh, using up our time wisely. Uh, and there's still 15 more moves to go before we get an extra 50 minutes. So he took the pawn. I captured as well. I want to stay ahead on material. And next he played a fantastic move. I said, af to the, uh, I said afterwards to him that this was probably the best move on the board. And I had not seen it. F5. So if I don't take it, he can play F takes G6 making my pawns uh, a little bit uh, fragmented. But I did take, and now the h-pawn is a passer, so maybe he can use his h-pawn to uh, to uh, gain an initiative. He played knight e3, forking the uh, rook and pawn. I then played rook d4. I saw that I could have blundered horribly with uh, playing bishop d4, and I very nearly played it, but at the very last second, I saw that rook takes d4, rook takes d4, rook h8 wins a piece. And I might still just be able to draw this game, but I'm not confident if I can or not. So, so I didn't play that. So I played rook to d4, rook e1, and again, I just didn't see any tactics. I played e6 which looked natural, but it led to him winning a pawn. He played knight takes f5, pawn takes, rook takes, king takes, rook takes. And I am still a pawn up, but my pawns are doubled and isolated. Uh, so it, it leads to an interesting rook and pawn endgame. Uh, just to go back a little bit, he did have another move, which was uh, leads to a similar outcome. Rook takes bishop, king takes, knight f5 check, four king, king and rook. So after I take it, rook takes e8. Leading, and it leads to a very, very similar position. Uh, and I think rook d2 would be good for me here. So he played, yeah, he played knight, the knight takes f5 line. And after he took on g7, I played king e7. So I'm just guarding all my pawns with the king. Rook g8. And now my technique pays off. I don't need to think so much. I can play rook a4. Uh, so my rook is now very uh, good in attacking and defending at the same time. I think it's slightly better than rook d2. He now played king f2, trying to get the king active. Rook takes, king e3. So at this point, I felt that I need to get my king more active with king f6. So I'm guarding uh, the two f pawns. h4. And I really don't want that h pawn to be uh, a, nuisance, a nuisance. So I play rook a4. And he has two options, really. One is h5, rook h4. Rook a8, and we'll trade off a pair of pawns, and I'll try and win with my two extra pawns against uh, against him. And I think I can win, but it will be a very tricky game. But he chose uh, a different move. He played g3, unfortunately leading to a winning king and pawn endgame. Rook g4, 
And now rook a8 is far less effective because I'll take the pawn with check and then be able to win the second pawn. Uh, then it'll be king and three pawns against a king, which will be a very easy win. So, for example, here, this is winning. I just need to keep my king near the pawns and uh, my doubled isolated pawns are actually quite useful because I can use the one that's on f7 uh, as a shield for my king and the other two pawns can march up. So he was forced to play rook takes g4, f takes, and now I did have, uh, I had a winning end game, uh, but I had to be careful. King d4, and what's amazing is if you take away my f7 pawn from uh, from the board, then I think it's a draw because uh, his king can keep the two uh, queenside pawns at bay, and my king can't move any closer to the pawns and the centre of the action because of white having the move h5 and throwing the h pawn up. Fortunately, I had just enough, though. I played king g6 to stop any h-pawn uh, wanderings. King d5. And now I just want to distract the king a little bit. a5. King c4. f5. King b5. And I now win with a pawn sacrifice, f4. So I'm going to give up a couple of pawns in order to get my own pawn through. I do a pawn breakthrough. Uh, and he resigned here because there's no chance of holding it. The position could end up being like this. G takes, G3, F5 check, King takes, H5, G2, H6, King G6, King takes, Queen. And then after I grab the h6 pawn, just to be sure, I'll then have more than enough time to do a simple checkmate. Or even throw my pawn up the board and make two queens and win that way. So it was it was an interesting game. I made it a lot harder than, <laughs> than I should have done. Uh, but I felt that in this game, tran transpositions to the... Uh, to different openings are very important and it really does change uh, how you play the game because your outlook on the position might be drastically altered so here he made it like a London system because of uh, the uh, the fact that I played c5 and after I take he's basically lost a pawn so his London system type move doesn't work well against my uh, I suppose it would be as similar to a uh, Benoni uh, invitation. And then the c4 move, I thought the position was uh, similar to a, uh, what do you call it, a um, Moroxy bind in the Sicilian. So I thought he was going to be able to play uh, knight takes d4 in a moment after perhaps first playing knight bd2. Also, this could be like an English. And finally, it could be uh, it could be like a reversed queen's gambit uh, declined, where white will play knight bd2, knight b3, and then uh, knight takes d4. So I then thought I'll grab the material, and that way this queen spawn opening will be uh, will be in my favour because I'm a pawn up. But again, I should have recognised the transposition of openings. So d6 was easily better, threatening e5 at a later point, and then we'd have had a position where I had that solid d4 pawn, just cramping white style. So e3 takes takes. And now we've reached a queen's pawn opening where white is just a pawn down. And I could set up like a, a king's Indian. So that was probably what I should have done. But again, I didn't appreciate the nuances of the position. I took, 
Knight takes, and as I said, we've reached a Smith Mora, which is a very aggressive setup from White, uh, where he does actually sacrifice the pawn and uh, has has a very active uh, set of pieces here. The minor pieces are often uh, often very good in disrupting my plans and uh, creating threats. So, I, so Black has to be very very careful in this line. So I think d6 is the main move, and e6 can also be played. But my queen a5 wasn't really addressing the nature of the position. And I only cottoned on after bishop b5. I saw that, yeah, this isn't looking so good. So I need to play defensively and not go for tactics, because I don't want to open up the center when my king is in the center, and also when white's got more development. So... I'll place safe and castle. And now we do reach a position which is uh, better for me. We're out of the opening and we're into the middle game. But wow, that, that, these uh, openings are chameleonic. They're changing <laughs> very, very quickly. And uh, in this game, I didn't really appreciate that, which I think led into uh, my mindset not being in the right place throughout the game. I just kept wanting to swap off and not really appreciating uh, the Sicilian type tendencies of this uh, this middle game, where White controls d5, has the e pawn out, gaining space, and that bishop on c4, uh, that particular diagonal is very aggressive, and my bishop on g7 is not so not so hot. It can't really do a lot uh, over here. So I did I think b5 was one of the only moves I played which I now like <laughs> looking back because it allows me to gain the pawn on e4 and then my bishop h6 and knight d2 I felt were misguided because I was too eager to swap off and again I didn't really consider the uh possible outcomes so knight takes e7 again is the best move and I think all I've earned from this position is a draw, really, when I should have won it fairly comfortably. Anyway, uh, that was uh, the game I've actually played today. So I've got one more game tomorrow, which I will uh, upload as soon as I can. Until then, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.